Successful operation of the water reel irrigation system depends a great deal on the operator's understanding of the proper startup and operation procedure. In this chapter, we will review step-by-step -step operation of your turbine drive agrain water reel. Pull your water reel to the area you are irrigating. Position your water reel and tractor perpendicular to the irrigation lane. Park the reel at the riser or hydrant. Remove the turntable locking pin and rotate the spool so that the sprinkler cart is facing down your irrigation lane and is approximately 90 degrees away from the chassis. Never attempt to pull the tube off the back of the machine. The sprinkler cart and tube should always be pulled out at a 90 degree angle to the chassis. The stabilizer legs will not hold a load of incoming tube if the chassis wheels are not 90 degrees from the sprinkler cart's travel path. Once you've rotated the machine, replace the turntable locking pin. Be especially careful to have the spool squarely aligned with the sprinkler cart's travel path. This will avoid unnecessary lateral stress on the level wind mechanism. Verify that the chassis of your water reel is level. If it is not, adjust the jack accordingly. Machines with an ST4, 5, or 6 chassis are equipped with a screw type jack, unless the hydraulic jack was ordered separately. All ST7s are equipped with a manual hydraulic jack. The tongue jack offers a set of five adjustment holes to augment the stroke of the screw by 11 inches. The stroke of the screw is 14 inches. These dimensions apply to both the screw type and hydraulic tongue jacks. Do not extend the jack beyond the stroke of the screw. Extending the jack beyond the stroke may cause serious damage to the tongue jack. If your machine is equipped with manual stabilizer legs, manually crank each leg into the ground until both stabilizer feet are firmly inserted. If your machine is equipped with hydraulic stabilizer legs, your tractor's hydraulics will be necessary. With hydraulics, the stabilizer legs and sprinkler cart lift are linked together mechanically, so the hydraulic cylinders move both the stabilizer legs and the sprinkler cart lift at the same time. The tractor that tows the water reel typically provides hydraulic power to the water reel's hydraulic controls. The control valve on the tractor controls the lifting and lowering of the legs and sprinkler cart. The operator should understand the hydraulic functions before attempting to operate. Be sure to operate the tractor or hydraulic power source at low engine speeds when using the water reel's hydraulics. Once you've lowered the sprinkler cart and stabilizer legs, disconnect your tractor's hydraulics if used. Pull the tractor around into position to pull the sprinkler cart down the irrigation lane. Lower the sprinkler cart from its transport position. This was already completed with hydraulic sprinkler cart lifts. Once lowered, unhook the cables or chains. Adjust the sprinkler cart to the desired width. The width of the gun cart is adjustable for stability and applicable crop bed widths. It is easiest to adjust the width of the gun cart before lowering it all the way to the ground. Set the desired sprinkler arc. Kifco recommends a sprinkler arc of 320 degrees. Adjust the sprinkler stops accordingly. Confirm that the sprinkler is equipped with the proper nozzle. The sprinkler drive arm has adjustments to change the spray pattern of the gun. Refer to your manual for more information on spray patterns and adjustments. Now that your reel is in position and perpendicular to the irrigation lane, it's time to pull out the gun cart. First, lift the anti-reverse pawl. 
The purpose of the pawl is to prevent coasting of the spool and loosening of the tube. If the pawl is under pressure, attach the PTO handwheel to the gearbox PTO shaft and rotate it counterclockwise. This will take pressure off the pawl so that it can be lifted. Lock the pawl into position by pushing the slide bolt underneath it. The only time the anti-reverse pawl should be in the up position is during gun cart pullout. Once the pawl is up, disengage the gearbox by turning the left gearbox handle one eighth of a turn clockwise. Never pull the gun cart out with the gearbox engaged. This will severely damage the gearbox. Verify that both stabilizer feet are securely in the ground. Attach the sprinkler cart to your tractor utilizing the chain, clevis, and pin provided. Pull the sprinkler cart out the desired distance. Use a gear in your tractor that will not exceed 3 miles per hour at full throttle. Pull the tube out at a steady speed and do not exceed 3 miles per hour. Do not start or stop during pullout as this contributes to spool coasting and may result in loosening of the tube. Slow the tractor to 1 mile per hour or less for 50 feet prior to stopping. You should never pull the tube out 100%. Always leave at least two coils of tube on the spool unless you are verifying timing. The only time you pull the tube out the full length is to verify timing. Timing will need to be verified if this is the first run of the water reel. For instructions on how to time your machine, please see Chapter 4 of this video. After the first run, the tube can be pulled out at an arc. If you are pulling the tube out on an arc, the first 20% of tube must be pulled straight away from the machine. Failure to observe this limitation places excessive side load on the level wind mechanism and may result in equipment failure or tube damage. Under no circumstances should the tube curve more than 90 degrees in its entire length. How well the tube will follow its laid out path back to the machine will depend mostly on the surface of the ground. Verify that the coils of tube remaining on the drum are both coiled and packed tightly. If they are not, use the hand crank and PTO input on the gearbox to tighten them. Attach the supply hose. Be sure not to have any kinks or twists in the supply hose. If your supply lines have not been used for an extended period of time, flush them prior to attaching to your water reel. Lower the anti-reverse pawl prior to operation. The pawl should always be in the down position except during gun cart pullout. Verify that the turbine is stopped and engage the gearbox by turning the left handle counterclockwise one eighth of a turn. After the gearbox is engaged, you need to reset it. Firmly pull the reset rod away from the gearbox. This must be done before the machine will go into gear. Now you can select fast or slow gear by turning the right hand gearbox handle. Make certain the turbine is not engaged and then turn on your pump. After all the air is purged from the system and the sprinkler is operating smoothly, select the appropriate turbine pulley. Refer to the turbine drive speed range decal located on your machine. Engage the turbine and adjust the speed control knob. The travel speed indicator, otherwise known as the tacky, displays the ground speed of the sprinkler cart, the amount of hose pulled off the machine, and the layers of tube that are left on the spool. The speed is shown in feet per hour. Refer to the tacky screen while turning the control knob until your desired speed is achieved. 
For more information on the travel speed indicator, refer to the tacky section in your printed manual. Never switch gears after the turbine has been engaged. Switching gears in the gearbox under high loads may damage the gear train. If you need to switch from high or low gear, you must disengage the turbine first so the spool rocks back against the hold pole and takes the load off the gearbox. To better manage the uniformity of applications, water reels are equipped with the speed compensator. The compensator slows the rotation of the spool at approximately the same rate that the tube builds up on it, so the velocity of incoming tube stays relatively constant throughout the irrigation cycle. Machines that are equipped with the cruise control function do not have a tachometer. The speed is read directly from the cruise control screen and the cruise control electronically compensates the rotation of the spool. Be sure to check the inlet pressure prior to engaging and after engaging the turbine. Verify that the pressure loss is less than 10 PSI. If the pressure loss is greater than 10 PSI, adjust the speed control knob. If you need to make further adjustments to the speed control, adjust your gearbox speeds and pulley settings. Never operate the turbine with greater than 10 PSI pressure loss. When the sprinkler cart completes the irrigation run and has contacted the compensation shutoff bar, the retraction of the tube will stop. You should exercise the compensation shutoff bar each time before the unit is restarted to confirm proper operation. Do not allow the machine to operate if the shutoff system is not working properly. Damage will result if the machine fails to stop when the irrigation tube is completely rewound. When the irrigation run is completed, stop the pump. Lift the sprinkler cart into transport position and retract the stabilizer legs. Disconnect the supply hose. Rotate the spool and cradle to the transport position. Never transport the water reel without returning the spool to the transport position. The water reel is now ready to be moved and set up in a new location. Or, the water reel can be rotated 180 degrees to irrigate in the opposite direction, utilizing the same water supply. This video is not intended to replace your printed manual that came with your machine. Be sure to read your manual in its entirety prior to operating the water reel.